Hello, Sky friends, and welcome to Seasons of Skyrend, Book 4. We're a custom 5e D&D adventure that focuses on the stories of our characters as they seek to change the world, and how the world responds in turn. I am your host and DM, Scott, and you can find me on Twitter at TheScottBlake. Hi, I'm Chris, and you can find me at EwokKiller on Twitter. I play Finnegan Finn Tempest, a tiefling trainer, which is a Skyrim original class supported by the Metalweave Games supplement Baby Beastry. Finn is the trainer of Cerulius, a blue guard drake. Hi, my name is Nate. You can find me on Twitter at Skyrim underscore Nate. I play Darvin Grimm, the human monk, and I am currently hosting Cade, the demigod of the land in my brain. Hi, I'm Shannon. You can find me on Twitter at Skyrim underscore Shannon. I play Aranus Gray, the god of rebellion, and I am a half-elf bard. You can also find the show on Twitter at Skyren Podcast, and you can support us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Podcast. Head on over to find out about bonus chapters, early access, NPC creation, and more. Now then, thank you for joining us, and please enjoy this chapter in Seasons of Skyren. While transporting members of the Golden Moon, a group of half-dwarf pirates, to authorities so that they could be held accountable for their crimes, the regal splendor was set upon by a great lightning phoenix. Finnegan managed to establish a basic form of communication and discovered the phoenix's true targets to be the pirates. The Golden Moon had been hunting the phoenix as revenge for the death of their father, the dwarf pirate Goldbeard. Seeing this as an opportunity to finally get their vengeance, the pirates eagerly agreed to be set free and engage with the phoenix. Although they may have had difficulty dealing with the likes of you, they quickly showed their expertise in aerial combat from astride their various flying mounts. The great lightning phoenix was overwhelmed and fell in battle. True to the nature of all phoenixes, their quote-unquote death was more a phase of rebirth than it was a true end. Their egg fell from the sky to the snow below, and the golden moon were in high spirits as they descended to claim their prize. Even though you were all fine with the idea of the pirates fighting the phoenix, win or lose, the fate of the egg went completely unexamined. Not knowing what they intended to do with it, and fearing the worst, you decided that your prior agreement did not cover the egg. Aided by Aranus's magic, you transformed into giant eagles in order to pursue them. What followed was a bloody fight to determine who would get the Lightning Phoenix egg. Though wounds were severe, only Mila, Goldbeard's giant Luna Moth, suffered fatal wounds. Her death proved to be the end of the combat, with Finnegan claiming the egg and demanding the pirates leave with only their lives as recompense. Goldbeard relented but soon proved that her desire for revenge had not yet been sated. It had only been shifted to you. As she and her sisters fled, they shot down the regal splendor, tearing holes through the balloon. Your friends barely had any time to react, but thanks to Ulwan's piloting and Felicity's abilities from Favon, they managed to prevent any other significant damage to the ship. As you rush through the snow back to your friends to assess the damage, you can see some cargo and debris that was flung from the ship and spread out in the snow. Ulwan, seemingly unscathed, stands in shock with a piece of the ship's name board in his hands. What do you do? I immediately just shout, uh, is everyone okay? Sound off. Ulwan turns, the board still in his hands. Ah... Uh, I'm a little rattled, but I'm fine. I, uh, everybody else is still in the ship, as far as I know. It was, it was me and Felicity on the deck when we went down. I think she went back inside. Uh, what are we going to do? Uh, well, first I'm going to make sure that everybody's 
if there are any injuries are tended to, and then uh, we're going to fix it. All right, Bob the Builder. Can we know? Let's prefer, fix it, Felix. Can I prefer fix, fix it? it, Felix. Thank you very much. Yeah. We're just going to start calling all those, like, gold beard people Wreck-It Ralph. Wow. No, because Wreck-It Ralph's actually a good guy. And so he are they. Okay. Just because he's a bad guy does not mean he's a bad guy. Okay, like... Exactly. You're in the, the game the right now. Beginning of the movie. Yeah, well, if I'm Fix-It Felix, I think Wreck-It Ralph is bad. Whatever. Oh, anyway, I'm going to go check to on friends with Ralph. I'm going to go check on everybody else. Open your. Yeah, sorry. <laughs> we got distracted <laughs> real fucking fast. <laughs> um, we got distracted oh hard God. there. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Fuck fix it, Felix. I'm just going to go check on everybody. Ew. Okay. Ugh, you know what I mean? God damn it. <laughs> Can't okay. say anything anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Arnis wants to go check on injuries. Mm-hmm. See if everybody's okay. I'm a healer. It's what I do. <laughs> Darvin, Finnegan, what do you want to do? Mm, seeing that Arnis is going to check on injuries, I'm assuming Arnis is going to go check on injuries of people, so I'm going to go check on mm-hmm. the animals in the animal storage. Excellent. Excellent. All right. Darvin, mm. what about you? Arnis is going to go check on some people. Finning is going to go check on some animals. I guess maybe I'll like circle the ship and sort of try to inventory slash catalog the damage if I'm smart enough. Yeah, yeah. Assessing the damage to the ship itself. Very good step. Which are actually the three topics that I had for these hopefully fun or at very least interesting little skill challenges. We got people, we got animals, and we got a ship. Where do we start? Who wants to start? Arnis, let's go check on some people. Cool. As you head into the ship, roll perception. This is just to find everybody. It's a small ship, but people could be trapped somewhere. Oh, it's going to be a good night. I crit. I'll give you the total. Hang on. It's a 27. Nice. Okay. In which case, I'll give this to you just straight out. Most people are fine. You find Ristos flying around, straightening up a few things of his own, just checking out the damage. He's, he's not a very actively helpful person, but he is doing what he can to make sure he knows what's going on. Carolina, Felicity, Parlin, Mahogany, Olwan, they're all fine. Asturias has been absolutely rattled by this situation. More than that. Asturias isn't physically hurt, but the mental trauma of surviving a crash was not something she was prepared for. You find Seth in the tween deck, and he's just bawling his eyes out. He's not physically hurt, but he just got so scared of the whole situation. And doesn't know how to deal. He's not this type of adventurer. He's a bookkeeping adventurer. This got very real very fast. And very unexpectedly. You find Sam. He's down on the lower deck. He is near a bunch of crates that got smashed up in the crash. And there is some wooden debris piercing his side and his leg. So he is physically wounded. But mentally and emotionally, he seems to be alright. But There's quite a bit of blood. And finally, you find Morello and Tonk. They seem to have been flung across the room and are curled up in a corner together. Tonk is actually fine, but Morello, trying to protect his friend, is not. He got hurled up against the wall, smacked his head, and bleeding a little bit. Seems to be a little out of it, too. Just like fuzzy mentally. So you've got Sam and Morello, who are physically hurt. You've got Asturias, who is just all nerves right now. And you've got Seth, who is in a very sad state at the moment. Before we continue on with that, now that Arnis has successfully assessed the situation, sure. Finnegan, mm-hmm. you want to go check out the animals? Perfect. Yes. You head down through the ship. The ship is still upright, I guess I will say. 
It's a little tilted. It is listing a bit, you might say, but it is mostly upright. Passing through the lower deck into the hold, you come to where the animals are kept. Please make a perception roll as well. Oh, this is going to go well this evening, friends. Did you crit too? Oh, no. (laughs) He was being sarcastic. That's a seven, friends. (laughs) Well, Finnegan, I guess side question. Do you remember which animals are on the ship? I've got the list right here. I'm just curious. No, I don't. I'm sorry. Okay. No, it's all right. We haven't really done much with the animals. Okay. A seven. You get down to the hold, and there is just a mess. There's hay everywhere. There's the animal feed, you know, just tossed all about. And you're looking around, and you don't see any of the animals for a moment. Hanging from the ceiling, still swinging slightly. There's a small lantern. And the moths are up there flitting around that. And over against the side of the ship, the Crimson King Fisher is pecking at some food. However, that means the whereabouts of the fennec fox, the stag beetles, and the poison dart frogs are entirely unknown. All right. um, uh, Did you want to move on and I can think about what I'm going to do next? Yeah, yeah. We're going to hit up Darwin real fast. All right, Darwin. You got the easiest job here, probably. Nice. It's a ship. (laughs) It's an airship. It doesn't have feelings. It can't get lost. Mm -hmm. People can pilot it in their own direction, but inanimate object and all that. Yeah. You can't get mad at me if I say the wrong thing. (laughs) Not until we imbue it with some sort of consciousness. Oh, let's not. Okay. So, Darwin. Circling around the ship, assessing the damages. Go ahead and roll perception. Ooh, I got a six. Mm. 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 Well, with a six. There certainly is debris in the snow. From what? I don't know. Wooden debris. So parts of the ship, parts of cargo from the ship. It's very difficult to say. The balloon is torn in several places and will need to be patched up before this thing can be airworthy again. That much is exceedingly obvious. And as you saw when you first approached the ship, since Ulwan was holding onto the name board, or at least a piece of it, you notice that the place where the name is on the ship has been damaged and bits of the name have fallen off. It now just reads as the splendor. The regal part has fallen clean off the ship. Other than that, you don't notice anything. I mean, there's damages, sure, but you don't know if any of those are, like, significant enough to matter. Right now, it's just the balloon's busted. We should fix the balloon. And busted. <laughs> but this is also my way of reminding you, hey, if you want to rename the ship, now we've got a story reason why that might be needed, unless you just want it to be the Splendor. The Splendor. No, no, the Splendor. The <laughs> Splendor. You have to say the blank, the missing word. Hit that beat. Yeah, yeah. The ship will need fixing. Ulwan is still outside and would be able to lend a hand, but right now it just seems you might need a little bit of direction on what to do first. The same is true for any of your other friends who are currently not hurt. They can assist, but they need direction. Uh, Because right now they'll be tending to themselves and those they care about, and probably just trying to figure out, hey, what's going on in the ship? How is our food supply after we got raided by pirates and then crashed? But we now have a clear understanding of the state of those three. How's the party? How are the animals? How's the ship? That being said, who wants to deal with one of those challenges first? I'll jump up. Um, I've got many, many of my uses of speak with animals left for the day. Excellent. And I feel like since I've spent so much time with these creatures, because this is where I was hanging out while we were traveling, that I know... I know at least their names or what they prefer to be called at this point. And I just want to spend as much time as it takes trying to 
use that ability to help me find them. Okay. How long does that last? Mm, it lasts the casting of the spell. So let me research the spell really quick. Going to be important. Do, do, do. Ten minutes. Ten minutes. Uh, okay. Four of them left for my daily uses, plus I have access to the spell. All right. How many first level spell slots you got? Left? Or how? I guess I should. Sorry. How many times could you cast that using your spell slots? Three more, and then it is a ritual. So, like, if I really needed to, I could ritually cast it too to help myself. Mm-hmm. But the ritual, because the casting time. Oh no, casting time's an action. So the ritual is like five minutes. So in a pinch, I could do that if I needed. It's more than five minutes, definitely. I'm just trying to find out what it actually is. I think it's five times whatever the casting time is. I thought it was like either 10 minutes plus the casting time or an hour plus the casting time. I thought a ritual was 10 minutes. Yeah, 10 additional minutes. Okay. Still, not an impossible amount of time. You spend a little over 10 minutes to cast it again. But that's getting ahead of ourselves. You've got several times you can cast it before you have to resort to ritual casting. So let's do it. What do you want me to roll? Uh, I need you to tell me how you're... What are you doing? You cast speak with animals. You can now talk to animals. They can talk to you. What are you doing? I pick one of them and I, I, I call their name and I'm trying to, like, in this space, kind of convince them like you would with a cat. Like, okay, okay come on, kitty. It's safe to come out. Like, I'm here yeah. to help you. I'll make sure you're safe. Sorry this happened. Which one are you calling? And if you know their name, all the better. Okay, remind me what we have left. Yeah, we've got the fennec fox, the stag beetle, and the dart frogs. Let's start there. Let's just go down your list. Let's, yeah, fennec let's just fox. go down your list. Let me see. If I'm going to make up a name, I need to look at what this creature looks like. It's a little fox with big old ears. They're adorable. Oh, they are adorable. It's one of the reasons why they're in here. They are. They're so cute. Frank the Fennec Fox. No, I'm kidding. I, I, <laughs> you're going to get me started on that naming convention and Shannon's going to punch me. Um, <gasps> so much face punching. I think this adorable little Frantic Fox is called Mouse. Okay. And I just, I call out to him and I'm like, uh, and trying to convince him that it's safe to come out. And I'm, I probably have like a piece of food too. Okay. Like, hey, well, come on out. I've got some food for you. As you call out for Mouse, the Fennec Fox, you don't get a reply. Instead, you hear the Crimson Kingfisher, named Indigo, respond back to you. Ah, oh, they're not here. Wait, did you see which way they went? Out. Out. All right. It's just, just me and the moths. Oh, yeah, everybody else went out. Some of their own accord. Some were a little bit more flung. All right, then. Nods to a small hole in the side of the ship from the crash. Well, uh, would you be willing to help us find them and bring them back? Hmm. Yeah, roll persuasion. Mm, I get to use my, arc, my intelligence stat for this because I'm persuading a creature I can train. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Or animal handling, I guess. But this sounds more persuasion. So you're actually speaking with them. 23. Ah, uh, 23. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I can help. A little dark out there, but I can do what I can. If you're going to have a light out there, all the easier, right? <laughs> okay. So, with the help of Indigo, are you heading out into the snow to go find these animals? Oh, and definitely Cyril, too. Oh, and Cyril, too. Okay. How do you go about finding these animals in the snow? Mm, None of these are particularly large animals. You can continue with the name calling, or sorry, you can continue with calling out their names, but if there's other tracking type methods you want to employ let me know mm, i think i'm going to i want to try and set up like they've been fed a pretty consistent diet of food that they would know so i want mm-hmm. to try and like set up a place of food with them like with like a torch so that they could come to it like like not so much a trap but like a safe space for them because this is not an environment where many of them are going to be successful in fact, none of them would be. This is a deadly environment mm-hmm. for all yeah. of them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> so uh, setting that up. 
so that they have a place to come while we are kind of out searching for them. And I might actually even like try and conscript, like if there's one of the younger people that are healthy and like not injured, like be like, Hey, come stand here near this. And if you see one of these creatures that are missing, come out, like step back so it doesn't get scared. And then like, watch it. Don't stop watching it. <laughs> Mahogany mm-hmm. could probably help you, but Scott would be able to tell you better. <laughs> I mean, you, you pick out who you want to help you. People who are fi- who are physically, mentally, and emotionally stable at the moment. Carolina, Felicity, Tonk, Parlin, Mahogany, Ristos, and Olwan. I'm going to ask Carolina if her and Scratch wouldn't mind helping. Because that seems like a really good idea. They can set up by the food and wait for animals if you want, yeah. Yeah. Coolio. Okay. While Finnegan gets this set up, an effort to help lure animals back towards the ship. Darwin or Aranis, what would you like to use to make headway on your projects? Well, okay, my first, my first actual priority is Sam's injuries. However, I need to know, like, basically, like, how to handle the whole Morello situation. Because what I want to do is just tell Tonk, who seems kind of with it, that, like, I need to go handle a bleeding injury. Like, I need you to keep him awake. Okay. (laughs) But I don't know what you want me to roll for that. (laughs) The power of friendship? (laughs) (laughs) Now we're getting into my little pony rolls. Like, I don't know know if there's anything you need me to roll just to, like, convince him that, like, you need to keep him awake until I get back. You don't have to roll anything to convince one friend to look out for another friend. Oh, okay. Who got hurt. Trying to protect him. <laughs> I guess that's fair. <laughs> Morello does need to be helped, but Sam is the one who oh. is like actively bleeding a whole lot more. Morello has a little bit of blood, but more right. just like dazed and out of it. Yeah, that that's why I okay. decided on some triage. <laughs> just keep him awake. I'll be right back. <laughs> All right. How do you want to help Sam? Are you using healing magic? Or do you just want to, like, uh, roll medicine, get out some bandages, pull out the debris, and let time so, heal wounds? I mean, I have enough I have enough spell slots to just, like, literally cast cure wounds. So, um... Okay. Let's roll uh, medicine just to remove the debris, and then you can cast magic and he'll be fine. I just want to see if this is... Okay. See how well this goes. Because cure wounds won't pull out splinters Ooh. and shards of wood. I rolled a 25. Okay. You're able to remove the debris and everything fairly easily. Sam winces, but he's been in fights before. He's been hurt worse before. The bleeding does increase as you pull some of these out. But if you're going to heal him, please do so. Yeah. What are you casting? Cure wounds? Yeah, I'm going to cast cure wounds, but I'm going to cast it at, let's see... I'm going to cast it at a level four. Ooh. So Very I'm nice. going to roll four D8. Let me get some dice. Get some dice. I the mean, I have them. They're, they're out. That's 19. Okay. It, it'll do just fine. You cast Cure Wounds. Sam's bleeding stops. The wounds close up. And he's feeling much better. Sam is now available to help on other tasks if you need help. No, I'm good. I'm going to tell him to take it easy. Okay, he'll take it easy. Let's turn outdoors to Darwin. You've got a busted ship. Where do you want to start, Darwin? I I don't know. We've got a balloon with holes in it. It's going to need some sort of patching or stitching or replacement or magic. Yeah, that seems maybe not my specialty. You can get help. Hmm. That's what friends are for. Party members are for. Okay, then maybe I'll go back in the ship and see if I can find anyone who can help me. Okay. Who do you want to help? Unless they're hurt, they're available to lend a hand. So you've got... See, Sam's taking it easy after having just been healed. Carolina is out setting up a a lure point for the animals, but there's still Felicity. Tonk is tending to Morello at the moment. So you've got K 
Carolina, Felicity, Parlin, Mahogany, Ristos, and Owan. I'm going to ask Owan, because I remember he's good at things. He is good at things, and he has worked on this ship in the past, so he's an excellent choice. Yeah, Darwin, of course we should get started on that. Uh, we should have some supplies here for at least spot repairs. And he'll go digging through the hold in the tween deck, searching for it. And eventually he'll come out, and he's got scraps of cloth, big needles, big thread. You know, what is needed to repair holes in the balloon. But it's still going to take time and effort, and hopefully a little bit of skill, to get it done properly. So, you and Ol'wan are going to start healing some of these wounds in the ship. What do you want to roll for that, is the good question. Oh. Let me just refresh my mind about what we have in terms of skills. Yeah, same. So let's see. Acrobatics, animal handling, arcana, athletics, deception, history, insight, intimidation, investigation, medicine, nature, perception, perform. I'm shaking my head through this whole list of things here. I know, right? Um, I think the two best ones, outside of just rolling straight up dexterity, because like, hey... Make your hands do something small and intricate um, would be survival. Is this as you repairing something? Like if you had a broken, if you had a tear in your tent, I could see this being survival. Like I just have to know, yeah, how to actually do the sewing. You know what actually holds in this situation, as opposed to getting my hands to do it. Sounds reasonable. So I could see this being dexterity or a survival thing. Oh. Which one do you want to do? Well, the one with the better bonus, which is dex. Okay. So I think Ulwan is helping here by kind of guiding you along. All right, start here. Sew along this way. You want to use this kind of stitch. And he says a proper name for it. And it just like right over your head. And then he shows you an example of it in one corner. All right. His fingers move a little quickly and intricately. But it's something you should be able to replicate. But that's what dice are for. So, go ahead and roll with advantage, since you're getting a, a guiding hand from Olwan. Nice. Ooh, I crit, and then plus five. Oh, hell yeah. Hell to the yeah. You start making excellent headway, you and Olwan. You manage to get a couple of these smaller tears sewn up real quick. And then all that's left now is this one hole where it looks like parts of it have been frozen, burned, not burned, but, um, you know, frozen and absolutely shattered. And there's actual like big hole and not just a tear that you have to pinch together. And so, so you'll need to use some of the extra cloth and actually patch this up a little bit with a crit. I gave you two steps of success. You're one success away from successfully repairing the ship. All right. Everybody's had a chance to make a little bit of headway, some measures of success. Let's go back to Finnegan. You set up a little lure point outside. A little food, a little bit of light, and you've got Carolina hanging back there to keep an eye out on things while you, Indigo, and Cyril go search for these animals. Uh, or are you actually just using the lure point? I should correct myself. Is this just, no, did I set no, it up I correctly, think, and let's see who comes? I think the lure point is in addition to us going out and okay. trying to find them. Okay, all right. So we'll change what you roll. So, we're still looking for a mouse. Sorry, we're looking for the animals. You could find more than one in a single pass. Mouse is probably the most mobile of the three creatures, three types of creatures that have gone missing. But let's see. So, you've got your speak with animals. You're going out. Now there's actually a chance for success here to actually get a location on some of these animals. So, what is it you would like to roll as you're going out there trying to call for these animals, trying to get these animals' attention? Animal handling, persuasion, survival to track down animals. I think I think we're gonna go with the um, we're gonna go with the animal handling here. Okay, okay. It's a loose interpretation of animal handling, but you know what? I think no, it's fine. Survival is the same, and I think it makes better sense. So let's roll that instead. Okay. Yeah, animal handling is more getting them to come to you, or survival, like you can actually locate them even if they're not paying attention. So, uh, so with my bonus, that is a 19. All right. You should roll with advantage because of the lure point that's set up with Carolina actually over there helping out. 
It's still a 19. Okay. Okay. Just want to make sure you're getting your bonuses correctly. Yes. Thank you. All right. And indeed, it is Mouse whom you find first. They are poking through the snow with their paw and their nose, looking for something, anything. You see them lift their head up in an investigative manner. You see those big ears cut a little profile from the, from the torchlight. And they're slowly making their way over towards it, going to check out what's going on with that lure point. And then they hear you call their name. And they turn and they look to you, and they quickly begin bounding through the snow towards you. Yeah. What are you going to do when they get to you? I, you know, give them a little treat, something out mm-hmm. of our stores, and like give them a pat, and then I kind of like wrap them up in my coat and take them inside because this is a desert creature and is probably dying right now. <laughs> um, was not terribly close to death yet, but give it a day. Definitely would have been. Mm-hmm. All right. Mouse achieved. Yay. Okay. Aranis, you've helped heal up Sam. You've got Morello, who's a bit woozy, might have a concussion, uh, and he's got a spot of blood. And then you've got Asturias and Seth, who are hurt in a different fashion. Again, triage. Physical injuries first. So I'm going to help Morello. I'm going to basically do the same thing as I did to Sam. I want to cast Cure Wounds at level four. Okay, go ahead and roll for it. Like worse than last time. It's 18. <laughs> Not too worse. Nice. Tonk is helping hold Morello upright. You know, hold him by the shoulders as you kind of swing a little bit. You cast your cure wounds. You see his eyes come into focus more. Takes a deep breath. Morello straightens himself up. Whew. Thanks, Arnis. Oh, my head is pounding. Um... Uh, he's got a bit of a headache, you know, a little residual. That's all. I I want to look him straight in the face and just say, you did good today, kid. Oh. He smiles and nods in acceptance of the compliment. He turns to Tonk and Tonk gives him like a big shake. Like, yes, he's okay. Merle holds a hand like, whoa, whoa, slow down, slow down. <laughs> he rubs his head a little bit again. Now can I have that nap? Oh. <sighs> But Mello is healed. He is fine, and he is able to assist if people need. Leaving you only with Seth, who is crying in the tween deck, and Asturias, whose cage has 100% been rattled. Yep. But let's go back outside. Darvin, you and Olwan, sewing things up. Yeah. Would you like to continue on that same path? Yep, keep sewing. All right. One more dex roll. You and Olwan working on this big patch together. Okay. I got a 17. Ah, is that with advantage? No. Let's roll with advantage. My bad, I forgot. Uh, Well, it doesn't help. I got a 11. So 17. 17 still. Wonderful. Okay. Goes a little slower incorporating this new fabric in with the old fabric. It's almost the same. It's a little bit different in terms of the weave and the material. Needle goes through it a little bit slower. But you and Olwan manage to get it sewn up just fine. The process takes a while. Olwan just starts telling stories about previous times he's been on the ship. Uh, you know, Earl Earl liked to fly around a lot. He hardly ever really landed, though. Kind of preferred it up here in the sky. Um, unless we were visiting members of his family, of course. Can't say we've ever had a wreck this bad. It was mostly just spilled wine and weathering, but... Well, it's kind of nice to see the ship get some interesting use. Shame about the name board, though. Guess we'll have to either put that back up or put something new there. <sighs> All right. The balloon is fixed. Nice. There are still some spot damages here and there, such as where the animals got out from. But in terms of being able to go up in the sky again, it should be fine. The balloon part should be fine. This might be a little drafty indoors. Okay. Finnegan. Yes. You've found Mouse. Now that all that's left are the stag beetles and the poison dart frogs. There was an untold number of them, meaning that I had not specified how many there were of each. But you won't have to go and find each and every stag beetle. They will be together. Same with the poison dart frogs. They will be Got together. Um, Given- so don't worry, I'm not going <laughs> to yeah. filter this down to like each and every stag. 
Mm -hmm. Um, Given the cold, it's probably not good for either of them, but it's probably worse for the amphibians. So let's go for the frogs first. All right. Well, we'll see who you actually find. If you still want to be calling to them, you will need to recast or speak with animals. Got it. No problem. I can do that. Yeah. We're kind of playing with time now. It's a bit more elastic. Things are happening fast and slow. Okay. So is this more searching through the snow, calling out their names, this survival, trying to track them down? Yeah, I definitely think it's it's more survival, like tracking them while still also like, here, froggy, froggy. Okay. I think based on how just absolutely creative Earl Earl was, they're all just named the elven word for the color they are. Oh, all right then. We do have a nice array of colors here. Yeah. All right. So what are you rolling to find them? Um, I'm going to roll survival. Okay. You can get advantage because Cyril is helping you. I don't think the lure point is going to work on these frogs. Well, thanks, Cyril. 18. 18 from Cyril? Yes. Oh, I just want to know who found them. (laughs) Oh, definitely not me. I think I ended up stuck searching for one in the snow that I thought I had found, and it was not him. (laughs) Okay. So let's see. All right, I need, to, I need to die here. One, two, three, four, five. Perfect. Six of these. Let's find out which color Cyril found. <laughs> delightful. Delightful. Cyril is sniffing through the snow, pushing through, pushing the snow aside, and manages to find one of the purple poison tree frogs first. They're all together, but it's the purple one that she finds by brushing her snout up against and gets a bit of the poison on her. Oh. And just as a just as a side note, I'm taking these poisons from the grung. So it's not all it. just like they are poisoned or they take poison damage. Purple. Cyril finds herself filled with a desperate need to soak herself in liquid or mud. <laughs> <laughs> Much like a frog would be wont to do. Not finding either of those right here. She bounds a few steps away and just begins rolling in the snow as if it were water, as if she mm-hmm. were trying to get it all over her scales. She pops up and she's got, you know, a bunch of snow, ice and whatnot in between her scales, hanging from her brow, on her nose. She will need that cleaned up, but it's not anything super dangerous. Got it. Sorry, she will need the poison cleaned up. The snow is just snow. Got it. But you have found the frogs. Yeah. How are you getting them back? Because again, they are poison tree frogs. Oh, yeah. I'm going to use my mage hand because mage hand can carry like 10 pounds. Okay, that'll be good for a few frogs. Oh, what I'll do. Uh I'm super smart. I think I can still cast this. Let me check. Yep. I have Tensor's floating disc and I have a level one spell slot. Then, yeah, yeah. Tensor's floating disc, little mage hand, picking them up and just tossing them over there. Boom, boom, boom. And then when we get them close enough to the ship, like we can put them in their container and get them in the ship. Yeah. They had like a little terrarium type thing going on. Might need to refill the water that was in there. Likely. Wonderful. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. All right, all right, all right. So fitting in that leaves you with just the stag beetles to find. But before we do that, Arnis. You've got Seth, who's crying, and you've got Asturias, who's having some issues. Would you like to deal with either of those right now? I mean, I do. I do want to deal with Unlike the physical damages, sorry, unlike the physical injuries, these are not as pressing. So if you wanted to do other things, it would be well, less of a crime. True, but it seems prudent to at least, like, like talk to them and make sure they know that like I see you I understand that this is an issue I also understand that like I may not exactly be the person you want to talk to so I will make sure the people that you do want to talk to or that you are close to are like that you are their priority okay who do you want to talk to first then um well let's talk to Seth excellent choice Since I'm just going in opposite order here. Excellent. He is actively crying there on the tween deck. Before you get to him, do you remember who his good close friend is? Yeah, it's Reistos. It sure is. 
Do you want to get help from Ristos here? Yes, I do, if he's not too busy with Darwin. That's Olwan. Oh, that's Olwan. Never mind. Then yes, I absolutely want to get help from Ristos. I'm sorry. <laughs> Duh. Of course it's Olwan that's helping. I'm an idiot. It's fine. Ristos is not sewing. No, of course he's not. Jeez. I don't know what I'm thinking. Be more judgy. All right. I know. I don't know. I don't know what I was thinking. How do you how do you approach Ristos? What do you tell him to get help from him? I don't know. Maybe like look, I know we're not like buddies or whatever, but I know that you and Seth have gotten close and you confide in each other and he is really struggling with having been through a crash and could use your ear because you are closer to him than I am. You know him better than I do. Oh, Seth needs some help? Yeah, <laughs> sure, of course. Showing more enthusiasm for Seth than he has for you in recent times. But he's going. That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> so, you crawl through the tween deck. You find Seth hanging out. He's still crying. His face is definitely still wet. It's not like heaving sobs or anything, but there's lots of sniffles. There's tears. Things are all tossed around around him from the crash. Uh, and he's just kind of curled up, you know, sitting down, knees pulled up to chest, arms around legs. What do you do? What do you say? You can't cure wounds this hurt away. I think I, for once in his life, Arnus isn't really going to open his mouth. And I think I just, like, I take a seat next to Seth, like, basically offer a shoulder, offer a hug. Mm -hmm. If he wants it, and then just kind of let Ristos take the lead on, on talking to him. This is going to be your role. You're getting advantage from Ristos. Okay. So I need you to roll something here, and then we'll see what Ristos has to say. Okay. Because you're leading here. Uh, what do you right, want to fine. roll? What do you want to roll? <sighs> I don't know. I, I, feel, I feel like persuasion might be the way to go, but I, I don't know. Yeah. There it isn't feels really the closest like a, to, like, comfort. <laughs> there isn't really a heart-to-heart -heart skill. Right. <laughs> So let's go with persuasion. Okay. As I said, you'll have advantage from Ristos. This isn't like persuading him. This isn't persuading Seth to act or to do something, but persuading right. that there are legitimately people here who care about him and want him right. to feel better. For sure. Well, and are here to like help him work on feeling better. You don't have to be right. better in five seconds. Mm -hmm. Right. It's a process. We need to make a first step here. Oh my god. It's a good thing I have a good bonus. You want to know what I rolled? Absolutely. I had advantage. I rolled a fucking one and a two. <laughs> nice. <sighs> Thank goodness Ristos was here. Still comes to a 16, failed, though. <laughs> if you had crit failed on this, oh, that would have been bad. That would have been bad. Yeah. I think you offer your shoulder, and Seth is reluctant he likes knowing that there's people physically here with him. That helps a lot. But I think it is more Ristos who gets through to him. Like, if it was just Ristos alone, maybe they could have, maybe it would have been a little bit more of an open chat, but it still would have felt like the assistance was singular, you know? Mm -hmm. If you only have one friend who ever comes to help you, do your other friends really care? Right. So having you here with Ristos. Seth sees this as more of a, you know, a group situation. You know, there are multiple people who care about me, including my good friend, Ristos. What does Ristos say? Um, Seth, come on. It'll be okay. I know it's scary. And I know that you didn't sign up for this, necessarily. It's... I wanted to keep you out of the fighting, too. That's what these others are for. Any motions over to you, Arnis. I'm still teaching this one, you know? He'll get better with time, I promise. He, like, looks over to you, Arn, is like, you gotta apply yourself more. Can I mouth back at him? It's not about me right now. I know, that's why I'm whispering. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> <laughs> now is not the time. <laughs> no, no, I don't say that. Of course I don't. <laughs> Ristos flies up, lands on Seth's shoulder. You know, like, 
wipes his eyes, pushes his hair back a little bit, you know. It's okay. You can be scared. I'll be here for you. Arnus will help me out. But until you get better, until you're feeling better, I'm right here for you. Anything else you'd like to do in this moment, Arnus? I don't think so. Seems like anything else I try to do is going to not go well. So <laughs> I'm just going to not. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Darvin. Yes. The balloon is airworthy again. During this time, as the hours have passed, others have pointed out that there are still some small damages on the side of the ship, little holes and things, scratches, definitely some damaged paintwork, and the damaged name. None of that is going to stop you from getting into the air. So it's your call right now if you want to address any of those things, or if you want to help out with other objectives. Mm, well, I'm not sure how I would help with other stuff, so I'll keep making the ship look nicer. Okay. Do you want to repair damages? Do you want to rename the ship? Do you want to put a fresh coat of paint on any of these spots? What do you want to do? Tempting to rename the ship without asking anyone, but... (laughs) But probably not the best idea. Okay. So, let's, let's, let's patch some spots. Okay. These are smaller holes in the hull. Since this isn't a ship that goes in the water... They don't mean that much, but patching them up will make your flight certainly more comfortable. You'll be able to control the climate indoors better, which is always really nice. I think you and Old One are going to have to go around, like, picking up scraps of wood, finding crates inside that, you know, maybe can be broken down and used to help patch up some of these spots. Additional lumber is not something that was kept inside. Because, honestly, who crashes an airship? We didn't crash it. It was shot down resulting in a crash you didn't crash it i guess is a good that's what happens when things are shot down it was not nobody launch padded this thing (laughs) (laughs) so darvin you can roll survival again here to mend the ship in a way that makes it more comfortable to weather the elements and this could be strength since you're probably going to be hammering in some nails uh, I don't think Dex is going to be too handy here in terms of, you know, you're not sewing wood. It should be an interesting skill for somebody else, but that's not Darwin's specialty. It sounds more like a druid treant type thing going on. Okay, survival's probably the best then. Okay. okay. Is Ol One still helping me? Yeah, you'll have Ol One helping you, so you'll get advantage from him. Nice. He could be holding things in place. If you hold the nail up for you, if you hit his hand with a hammer, he'll probably be fine. <laughs> I got a 15. Okay. okay. Much like with the large patch in the balloon, this isn't a pretty job, but it is a functional job. Question, are you doing this from the inside or the outside? Uh, inside, I guess. Okay. Just so we can picture it a little bit better. Also, I agree with you. Patching from the inside. Much nicer. Yeah. Going around inside, climbing around all the tossed around cargo and belongings into the various nooks and crannies of the ship, going around with bits of wood, cargo lids, things like that, nailing those back into place. People from the outside, especially when it's darker, probably won't notice anything. From the inside, yes, it's very obvious that a hole's been patched there, but it'll be functional. Keep the heat in, help keep the cold out. Congratulations, Darvin. The ship's not pretty, but it is now airworthy and free of holes that weren't already there. (laughs) Nice. We can consider fixing the ship up a success. Sweet. Everything else is cosmetic. Paint, name, polishing the metal on the bottom, you know. That's cosmetic stuff. Stuff that can be done, but not necessarily to be right now. Uh, And Finnegan. You've got some stag beetles out there somewhere. How do you want to go about finding them? Current method seems to be working pretty well, so I'm just going to kind of go back to the well. All right. Well, cast that speak with animals again if you want to keep calling for them. Cool. Let's do it. If you have any names for these stag beetles, that would be fine, but not necessary. Am I rolling with advantage again? Uh, Stag beetles, I don't know how much scent is going to help here perhaps a little bit, because they will smell less like snow and more like animals and the inside of your ship. 
So Cyril is not entirely unaffected here if you want her to help out. Yep. But if you want to call out for them, cool. And then let's roll some survival. Let's track down these animals. Or let's roll some perception and let's try to find them. 26. 26. Awesome. I think this is a combination of you and Cyril working together. Cyril, sniffing around, finds a spot in the snow that smells different. You look down and you investigate and you do find you do find what appears to be like a burrow hole. Like these stag beetles dug down into the snow. And you call down after them, and you hear a little voice call back up through the tunnel. Hello? Hello? <laughs> uh, I, uh, in, in to the ship. Didn't want to leave you out in the cold. The ship? Hello? Yes. Oh, oh, oh. Uh, little help, little help. Uh, it's struggling a little bit to climb back up the snow. Reach down. It's snow. You just dig it away. You push some of the snow aside, reach in, and, and the stag beetles will climb up your arm and into your sleeve. Cool, yeah. You've got a pair of stag beetles now inside your sleeve. Hope that doesn't feel weird. I'm not going to look at what they look like because it will probably make me personally uncomfortable, so we're good. Finnegan has no problem okay. with it. Okay. Okay. Ah, uh, so warmer in here. Oh. <laughs> it's adorable. And you're able to escort them back to the ship, too. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. So, at this point, this puts everybody back inside the ship. All the animals are back. Darwin and Olwan are back inside, finishing up their repairs. Finnegan, getting animals back into their particular pens and terrariums, cages and whatnot. Most of your friends are feeling better. It's only Asturias yet that nobody's reached out to. She's in her pair form. She's in the galley right now. Under the pretense of looking for food, but she's like finding food and then eating it right away. Or she's finding food and throwing it on the ground. And there's panic in her eyes. Arnis, I know you said you were the one who was tending to your friends, but everybody is now available to help if you want to call on them or... Darwin and Finnegan, if you want to go in and volunteer to lend a hand. I don't want to wait for somebody to volunteer. I want to go get Finn. Okay. Okay. Finnegan, are you willing to help? Help with what again? With Asturias. Like, emotional yeah. support. Yeah, we've, since we've... you know her best. Yeah, we've bonded, so I... Not a man of words, though. That's okay. Neither is Rystos, so it's fine. Yeah. Rystos comforted the shit out of Seth. Uh, oh, yeah. Okay. This so is the approach is. I am going to take. If I am going to help <laughs> you with Asturias, I am going to help try and calm and soothe Chase while you try and help and calm and talk to Asturias. Uh, they are currently joined as one. Oh, well, then fuck that. I'm useless. <laughs> <laughs> you can still be present for your friend. Yeah, yeah, no. I'm, I'm there. Okay. You two are in the lead right now. Uh, so okay. You can do. I then uh, I don't know that the same approach is going to work here as with Seth. Mm -hmm. I mean, I can I can try it, but I wonder if I wonder if it might be more helpful to just like sit on one side and maybe if like Cyril is around to have like Cyril on the other side, right? So there's sure. that like animal presence as well. Sure. Just to see, just that kind of like group comfort while you see if you can like speak mm -hmm. to her while I help you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, do you want me to do the talking? Is that what you're saying? Well, Ristos did the talking the last time. It was still me rolling because it's like my plan, right? Okay. What? I mean, if Finnegan wants to take the lead here and Arnis be assisting, that works too. That sounds like a horrible idea. My, I have zero stats to any sort of social stats. I Just yeah, putting up options. I thought I was here to support, so give me a second. I gotta think what I'm gonna say. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, I can start if that is, yeah. if that is more helpful. Um, and basically just start by just attempting to get her attention, right? Mm -hmm. Kind of as a means of not like snapping her out of it, but just kind of recalling her mentally so like just Asturias okay. Chase Finnegan Cyril and I are here 
Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I see. Yeah. Okay. She's, she's a little bit wild-eyed, a little on nerve. Okay. Can you can you tell us what you're feeling right now? Uh, feeling? Nope. Not feeling nothing. Just ready to go. Uh, we we need to make sure we've got enough food here, everything, and uh, we just need to go. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's not enough food. We need more food. Nope. Hmm. Hmm. And she's opening cabinets like quick close, pulling things out, throwing them on the ground. Lots of cabinet doors banging. Sounds of tin, you know, ting, 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 or glass ting, falling on the ground. Nothing's really breaking, but she's definitely making more of a mess. It's like 100% beyond my skill set. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, trauma, trauma. Should I get old one in? Got swallowed by that thing. Um, I, like, I'm really, like, I'm not sure what to do. Um, <laughs> well, we could jump right to a roll and use those results to help figure out what happens and how much she opens up. That, that might be helpful. Because right now, she doesn't want to open up because <laughs> she's a hunter. She's, right. you know, not supposed to feel this way. Um, that might be helpful. <laughs> okay. What would you like to roll to help her open up? I mean... Is persuasion my, again? Yeah, my my default is sort of persuasion. I certainly am not going to try to, like, slap her out of it. You know what I mean? Like, I'm not mm-hmm. going to do that because she will kick my ass. So, <laughs> right, like, okay. I know where my skill set is. <laughs> mm-hmm. Finnegan, would you like to lend a hand here in reaching out to Asturias and trying to get her to open up? Yeah. Um, okay. What do you want me to do? Do you, want uh, to roll? you don't do have to, to do anything. This is cool. just Arnest getting advantage from you. Cool. Then yes, I'm helping. Pretty much why I brought you. Right. Thank God. I crit. <laughs> <sighs> okay. If it matters, that comes to a 35. I mean, it's a nice big number, and you should feel proud for getting to say it. I really should. (laughs) (laughs) Asturias continues to practically tear through the cupboards, pulling out food stuff, throwing it on the ground, knocking it on the ground. And she's just getting more and more frustrated at everything. And eventually she grabs... That's a good thing to have in a galley. Chef's knife. Perfect. She's in her bear form, grabs a chef knife. Probably not as intimidating as her just bear claws, but if you see a giant bear woman who also is wielding a knife, maybe that's scary too. She's holding this knife and it looks small in her paw hand. And she's she's kind of waving it around a little bit and then she tink, tink, like jabs it into the countertop a few times. I am a hunter. I am a hunter. I am fully recognized and accredited and decorated by the bent bow. I have faced off against so many creatures. I've even fought you two. And all that time, it's just a job. It's fine. Do it. I move on. But the thought of going back up in the sky terrifies me. I I didn't do much flying for, to be honest. Never really needed to. Me and Chase, we're on the ground. I'm on the ground. I've fallen out of trees. I've fallen off of cliffs. But apparently falling out of the sky. A little bit much. A little bit much. Uh, so the story is... is Developing a little bit of a fear of flying slash heights. Yeah, I'm going to work her through that because we are going back up in the air. Um, (laughs) Who? All right. Put some wheels on this bad boy. I'm just kidding. Fuck no. Uh, Okay. Well, we are. uh, I'm going to start with a just thank you for telling me. For telling Finn. She turns and looks at you like she wants to throw this knife at you. <laughs> like, thank you. She doesn't say anything. Like, she just see that wild moment in her eyes. She's not used to other people knowing she's afraid of something. 
but continue. If you knew how many times we've run away from problems that we didn't want to deal with, you would be shocked. (laughs) We spend most of our time cleaning up our own messes. And what I've learned in all of that time is that the longer you wait to deal with something, the harder it is to deal with. Which is not to invalidate a fear of heights, of course. It's just to say that now that we know, we can help you because we're going back up in the air. But now we can support you. Finnegan, is there anything that you would like to add? I want to see how this goes first because Finnegan has a tough love approach, but we'll let's, <laughs> we'll see how Argan, Arnis handles it. Okay. okay. Snap out. Okay. <laughs> Not that tough. <laughs> oh, not that tough. Oh, okay, I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. Arnis, as you're saying this, and Astorius is still gripping onto that knife, you see her clench her fist, her paw fist, and the blade just bends in her hand. So let's go ahead and roll for this. Woman is scary. Okay. I would be way more terrified if I still didn't have, like, 89 hit points left. <laughs> <laughs> like, <laughs> it's not that she wants to kill you, but are you no, okay with your friend stabbing you every once in a while as trauma relief? I mean, no, that's I'm, unhealthy. I'm not particularly, <laughs> which is why I'm not way more terrified in this moment. But like, no, no, I like, I'm, I don't want that to happen. But because I know that I'm still like fairly healthy, I am not worried about it happening if that makes sense okay like it is not a healthy thing to do and i know that but i mean i think that she would probably learn something from it (laughs) when everybody else went what the fuck man okay sorry what am i rolling i just literally like rolled a die but i don't know what i'm rolling (laughs) well i hope you only rolled one die uh this is if finnegan's gonna hold his tongue here for a moment won't get his advantage, but you can still be rolling persuasion. I only this is, again, one. convincing her that you are sincere and that you will be here for her. But you're also saying, like, we're going back up. It's gonna happen. Right. I got a 22. She clenches her hand around the knife even tighter, and there's a cracking sound as the handle itself cracks in her hand. And she turns to like stab it into the countertop but she's not really holding back and instead just ends up like punching clear through it drops the knife inside rests her hand on the countertop (sighs) sorry I'll uh fix that (sighs) I know I know we can't stay here and I know the only way to get everybody out of here is to fly. I just might need a little space. But she turns over her shoulder, looks back at you and Finnegan. Thank you. It's what friends do. (sighs) Finnegan looks at Asturias and says, Oi, Asturias, seems to be you're going to be aground for a while. Some fresh meat might be a good idea. What do you say to a hunt? Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be good for Sarah to stretch her legs, too. All right. Let's go. She'll push past you both and head outside. Awesome. Okay. As folks continue to clean up and organize, and as Finnegan and Asturias head out to go on a little hunt. Oh, one emerges. <laughs> well, Darwin and I got a, got her pretty much fixed up. I, mm, it's not pretty, but it'll be functional. Just gonna need a bit of time to refill the balloon. Could probably leave tonight if we really needed to, but no harm in waiting until morning, right? Darwin, Arnest, do you have any thoughts on that? Uh, yep. I yep, agree. You have I don't know. Oh. I, no, like, like I, I agree. I concur. 
Whatever you I, think is best. <laughs> I concur with RNS's concurrence. <laughs> Co concurrence. Co concurrence. <laughs> The one continues. All right. Um, maybe when Finnegan and Astoria get back, we can have something fresh to eat. Mm-hmm. In the meantime, we can just clean up. And hmm. as Darwin and I were discussing, uh, the name's been damaged. So if we want to rename the ship, now's a great time. Mm. It's just something to think about. I but mean, like I do, but like to what? The stuff that I'd come up with feels like. I don't know. Feels real self-serving. So maybe maybe input from the group <laughs> would be a good idea. Okay. <laughs> Before we get lost in that. For sure. <laughs> as Ulwan and the others get to arranging and organizing, cleaning things up, conversation naturally emerges. And Felicity brings it up first. Well, if we're going to be getting airborne again by tomorrow... I guess we don't need to drop off any pirates anymore, so where are we headed? Do we need to make any stops? I I I see uh I see no need to head anywhere but to dra- dra- to our uh, direct uh, target. Anybody else have thoughts? Cuz I don't know what's going on. Do we I don't know. Arnis, had you said before that you want to go to Capris? I think you are had. You- I'm pretty is sure that, you is had, that Felicity yeah. talking or is that yeah. DM Scott talking? <laughs> Let's just keep that being Felicity. Arnis, uh, didn't you say something about <laughs> wanting to go to Capris? Because she's been there. She knows. She's not unaware of the situation. Right, Darvin? It was Capris, wasn't it? E- right. Okay, so the first thing that happens <laughs> is Arnis turns like beet red. Just like absolutely like a shade that you have never seen him turn ever before. And just goes, I mean, I thought if we needed supplies that it might be a good place to stop. But if it's just for me, I guess we don't have to. (laughs) And he just kind of like trails off at the end of the sentence. Like, I don't want to be that guy. Sam's resting up against the side of the ship. He's like, oh, looking very smug indeed, I'm sure. I mean, he's got a little bit of a smirk there as he's holding his side. Well, we're definitely going to need some supplies. Between the pirates and the crash, we did lose some. Capris is a port town. It's a nice little place. Good folk, friendly folk. He smiles and he's still just staring at Arnis. It is. Oh my God, okay. It is. All right. In his head, <laughs> Ernest is just like, fuck you, Sam, and your smirk. <laughs> and out loud, I'm like, well, I think that settles it. Let's go there. Okay. And then he just kind of walks away from the conversation. <laughs> just like, I have to go somewhere well, that's you- not this room. <laughs> where do you <laughs> go? Care where. It's a swat. <laughs> Are you off into the tween deck? Are you down in the hold? I probably, I don't know. Anywhere that's not where I am right now. Okay. It's just so uncomfortable. I have to go. All right. All right. Oh, good times. Good times. <laughs> all right, Finian. Before we wrap up here in the ship, mm-hmm. since you wanted to go out on a hunt, let's do a quick hunt. Let's just determine whether or not you found anything and were successful. Can we call this Cyril's training for the day? Absolutely we can. Absolutely we cool. can. Woohoo. Let's go out. Let's roll some survival. With advantage, you've got Asturias Chase helping you out, and she is a professional hunter. Guild member hunter. Ooh. That's a 23. Okay. What is it that you find and bring back to the ship for food. Let's see, we're, we're hunting in pretty much a tundra, right? Yeah. I mean, I've got ideas of what could be out here. One, there could be, you know, larger birds. Mm-hmm. But most of the creatures that I had out here were things like ice wolves, ice spiders, 
giant crabs and scorpions. What about like a herd of reindeer? Ooh. Something a little less gonna kill us and makes for good food. Okay. We're eating blitzen. <laughs> sure. You and Astorius find a group of reindeer, and most of them rush off, but you manage to snag one. They're dark brown with you know, a white chest and white tail and frost covering the antlers. This animal should sustain the group for a while. You will be eating reindeer for some time. But hey, reindeer's good. Sorry, I don't know that for certain. Well, and it'll supplement the rations we already have. And we lost some, so that's good. Deer is good. I don't know about reindeer. I've never eaten reindeer. Presumably, though, reindeer is good. And it will be probably the only fresh food that you get between now and Capris. Yes. You and Astorius can take some time dressing the animal. We don't have to worry about whether or not we're keeping the pelt or the antlers. If you want to, you can. That's fine. And we can make cool things out of them later. But for now, it's about the food. It's about the hunt. Astorius feels good about going out for a hunt. It feels more natural for her. It's what she knows. It's what she's good at. Okay. As the hours pass, and as the day winds to a close, everybody returns to the ship. Finnegan and Astorius from their hunting outing. Others who have gone out just for air, to stretch their legs, etc. The day comes to an end. One is filling up the balloon with hot air. It's not the prettiest repair job, but it will be functional. Although the ship could take off whenever we please now. It's been decided that a good night's rest is best before we take off and head north. As morning comes, such as it is, Astorius and Seth are both still rattled from the ordeal, from the crash. Seth, more emotionally. Astorius, a little bit more mentally. With time and with luck, that'll pass. The sky is still pitch black. The sun never rises here, of course. And Ulwan guides the ship up into the sky. It sways side to side a bit as it rises through the air, getting higher and higher off the ground. Astorius is keeping below decks this entire time. You can hear her claws scraping against some of the wood as she does her best to calm her nerves. Finally getting high enough into the sky, above some of the wind, Ulwan turns the ship north as you head towards Capris, far to the north. And with that, we'll bring this chapter to a close. But the story will always continue. Thanks again to all of our Patreon patrons for your support. If you'd like to become a patron, go to patreon.com slash skyrenpodcast and pick out a level that's right for you. Before we go, I'd like to give special thanks to everyone at the $5 and up tiers. At the $5 city council level, thank you, Shannon DeMello. At the $10 mayor level, thank you, Christopher DeMello. At the $15 governor level, thank you, Phoenix Bryan and Sierra Jones. Thank you for listening to this chapter in Seasons of Skyrend. If you like what you heard, please leave us a five-star rating and review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you find us. If you want to chat, we're on Twitter at Skyren Podcast. You can join our Discord server, or you can email us at skyrenpodcast at gmail.com. You can also find us online at skyrenpodcast.com. As always, thanks to Daryl Barnes for creating our theme music. You can find them on Twitter at Daryl Barnes underscore. We also want to thank the talented at Gabby underscore Desu on Twitter for our fantastic podcast art. Thanks again for joining us. We'll see you next time on Seasons of Skyrend. <laughs>